Good day, grade 10 learners. I am teacher JB Mendoza Becerra, and I will be your teacher in Arts 10, Module 2. So before we go officially to our discussion, let us first review our topic during the, our Module 1. So as you can see, is that we have here the elements of arts. We have line, shape, value, space, color, texture, and perspective. On the other hand, we, have, we also discussed about the principles of design. We have the following, unity and variety, contrast, emphasis and subordination, repetition and rhythm, balance, scale, and proportion. So for today's topic, we will be discussing about modern art and the 20th century art movements. So let's begin. So as you can see in this slide that we have eight 20th century modern art movements. So we have eight movements all in all. So we have the first one, we have Impressionism, Expressionism, Abstract Abstractionism, Abstract Expressionism, and we have also four art forms under contemporary which are the op art or the optical art, pop art or the popular art, performance art, and the installation art. So great 10 learners, for us to understand better uh, the differences between these art movements and these art forms, uh, we should know how to um, we should know the characteristics of each movement or and each art form okay the role of the, the elements and the principles of arts is a very vital in identifying the differences of these movements and art forms so let's begin with impressionism as you can see the, from the word itself impress uh, the artist from the impressionism is actually making impression from the society. So, one of characteristic na ating uh, impressionism ay about color and light. So, kung ito try natin tumingin ng isang artwork or ng isang masterpiece na under sa impressionism, may kita natin na gumagamit sila ng short broken strokes. Potol potol, hindi mahabang strokes. It means ipagpahid nila ng paintbrush nila sa kanilang canvas. Okay. So for the second, kung papansin din natin na gumagamit din sila ng pure unmixed colors side by side. Ibig sabihin, pwede kasi tayo magmix ng mga um, ng mga paints, tama ba? So hindi sila fan or hindi sila used na gumamit ng um, um, mga paints na pinaghahalo-halo para mag magkaroon ng another color. So they are fan of using unmixed colors. Okay? Then, freely brush colors. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, wala silang sinusunod na pattern sa kanilang mga strokes. Wala silang sinusunod na rules. Ibig sabihin, pwede pa vertical, diagonal, pwede pa horizontal. Next, if, if we will try to look um, from these artworks, mapapansin ninyo na ang strokes ng kanilang mga a paints ay bro, uh, broken. No? Hindi siya diretsyon, hindi siya pulido. And they brush it freely po, no? kahit sa ang direction na may kita nila. Ang uh, papansin niyo concentrated yung mga colors na ginagamit nila at hindi po mix. Okay? So, for our next characteristic is everyday subject. Ano nga po ba itong karakteristik na ito? So, ang mga output from Impressionism ay actually scenes of life o mga pangyayari o mga ganap natin sa ating buhay, mga house, household objects, or pwede ding household chores. Okay? Yung mga natatagpuan sa bahay natin at mga pang-araw-araw na ginagawa natin sa ating bahay. Sila din ay nagpapaint ng uh, landscapes and seascapes. So, nag-outdoor din po sila. Okay? Houses, cafes, and buildings. Yan ang mga subjects nila. Our next characteristic is painting outdoors. Previously, still life, portraits, and landscapes were painted inside the studio. Tama po yun. Ang pagpipaint noon ay ginagawa sa loob ng studio. The impressionists found that they could best capture the ever-changing effects of light and color by painting outdoors 
in a natural light. So mapapansin ang sabi ng mga ng mga impressionist artists ay mas nakakuha sila ng mas magandang uh, effects of light kung sila ay nagpa-paint sa outdoor dahil uh, nakakuha sila ng natural light na which is nagagaling it's either sa sun or sa moon. And for our last characteristic of impressionism, we have the open composition. Impressionist painting is also moved away from the formal, structured approach to placing and positioning their subjects. Gaya nga nang nabanggit natin kanina, na ang mga uh, artists noon ay fan ng pagpapaint sa loob ng studio. Okay? They are placing their, the objects or, the sub, or their subjects in front of them. Okay? Ang, ang ibig sabihin ng open composition ay ikinoconsider nila yung isa sa mga principles of design or principles of arts which is the perspective. Kinukuha na nila to ng iba't ibang angulo para mas maging dramatic, para mas magkaroon ng uh, uh, value, para mas maging artistic ang uh, kanilang mga paintings. After the characteristics, let's meet the man the different artists under Impressionism. So we have works of Manet, Monet, and Renoir. Hindi ako sure kung ano ang tamang pagpronounce ng kanilang mga pangalan, pero ang importante ay malalaman natin kung ano ang kanilang mga naging contributions sa ating modern arts. By the 1870s, the stage was set for the emergence of next major art movement in Europe, which is the Impressionism. It started with a group of French painters that included Edouard Monet, Claude Monet, and Auguste Renoir, and eventually spread to other countries such as Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. So we all know na ang influence ng Western countries ay napakalaki sa larangan ng arts. Okay? At sila din po ang nag para magkaroon ng art movement na tinatawag natin Impressionism. So let's meet them one by one. Edward Manet, one of the first 19th century artists to depict modern life subjects. If you can still remember, nang isa sa characteristics ng Impressionism ay ang everyday subject. So, makikita niyo sa underline na modern, lines, modern life subjects ang kanyang mga dinedepict. He was a key figure in the transition from realism to impressionism with a number of his works considered as marking the birth of the modern art. So, kung may isang focal person, key figure ng, um, to, uh, ng modern art, yun ay walang iba kung hindi si Edward Manet. Ito ang ilan sa kanyang mga artworks. So kung mapapansin natin ang mga outputs dito sa ating screen ay example ng Impressionism na kinuhanan sa pier at sa loob ng bar which is nangyayari sa pang-araw-araw. Second, Claude Monet, one of the founders of the Impressionist movement along with his friends Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and Frederick Basile. He was the most prominent of the group and is considered the most influential figure in the movement. Monet is the best known for his landscape paintings, particularly those depicting his beloved flower gardens and water lily ponds at his home in Giverny. So, isa sa karakteristik po ng Impressionism ay painting outdoors. Okay? So, na kung saan si Claude Monet ay a uh, fan ng pagpapaint ng landscape paintings. Some of his artworks, La Promenade and The Bridge Over a Pond of Water Lilies. Auguste Renoir, he is, along with Claude Monet, was one of the central figures of the Impressionist movement. His early works were snapshots of real life full of sparking, sparkling color and light. So, papansin nyo yung underlined word ay yung mga nabanggit natin characteristics ng Impressionism kanina. So, yan lang nagpapatunay na sila at ang kanilang mga artworks are under Impressionism. By the mid-1880s, however, Renoir broke away from the Impressionist movement 
to apply a more disciplined formal technique to portraits of actual people and figure paintings. So if you try to observe some of his outputs, no, again, dancer. It's very literal na the, 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 the lady in the in left is actually a ballerina. And the, the portrait or the painting in, on our right is a girl with a watering can. Post-Impressionism works of Cezanne and Van Gogh. After a brief yet highly influential period of Impressionism, an outgrowth movement known as Post-Impressionism emerged. When we say post, ito po ay patapos na or nagkakaroon na ng shifting from one art movement to another na sa end part na po. It means, kakaroon na or uusbong na ang panibagong art movement. Continuous using the basic qualities of the Impressionists, before them, the vivid colors, heavy, heavy brush strokes, and true-to-life subjects. Since this is still under Impressionism, because this is a post-Impressionism, they are still adapting no, the characteristics of Impressionism. It uses a geometric approach, fragmenting objects, and distorting people's faces and body parts, and applying colors that were not necessarily realistic of natural. So, kung mapapansin natin dito sa previous slide ay characteristics ng Impressionism, etong sa slide naman na ito ay actually characteristics naman ng susunod na art movement. Paul Cézanne. He was a French artist and post-impressionist painter. His work exemplified the transition from late 19th century Impressionism to a new and a radically different world of art in the 20th century, paving the way for the next revolutionary art movement known as Expressionism. Here are some output of Cézanne. Harley Quinn and a boy in a red vest. Vincent van Gogh, the very popular van Gogh. His works were remarkable for their strong, heavy brush strokes, intense emotions, and colors that appeared to almost pulsate with energy. So, kung mapapansin natin yung mga nakabold na mga words, which is brush strokes, emotion, co emotions, and colors, these are actually characteristics of both Impressionism and Expressionism. Since nasa transition na po sila. Okay, nasa post-Impressionism. Patapos na po, going to Expressionism. His striking style was to have a far-reaching influence of 20th century art, with his works becoming among the most recognized in the world. So, napakasikat ng kanya mga output. Recently, nakita ko ang mga pictures na kung saan yung launching ng Van Gogh Museum. Nandoon po ang kanyang mga higanteng mga output. Okay? So, eto ang ilan sa mga output ni um, Vincent Van Gogh. Bedroom at Arles. Starry Night. So, let's move to the next art movement which is the expressionism or also known as a bold new movement bakit kaya from the word itself express they are more expressive the artists are more expressive in a form of painting we have actually sub movements under this expressionism the first one we have the fauvism fauvism uses a bold vibrant colors and visual distortion so take note of the word distortion ibig sabihin hindi na regular yung mga shapes and forms na ina-apply nila sa kanilang mga artworks tingnan natin ang example ng fauvism look at this one the moon is actually in a form of oblong instead of a circle Yung meron tayong long shade. Here's our long shade. Meron din tayong mga puno. 
na binilog na lang. Okay? On the other hand, kung papansinin natin itong blue window, kung ating consider ang isa sa mga principles of art, which is a proportion, hindi po proportion ang kanyang ulo sa balikat, sa balakang, sa hita. Okay? Because ang ang fauvism is a distorted painting. No, ang mga shapes, ang mga figures, ang mga elements ay distorted. So ibig sabihin hindi ito yung karaniwang nakikita nating shapes. Okay? Next sub movement is a dadaism. Dadaism characterized by the dream fantasies, memory images, and visual tricks and fantasies. So it's all about fantasies. Dadaism, it starts with letter D. So take note, it's all about dream. Dadaism, the dream. Next, let's try to look at this example, which is the Guernica by Pablo Picasso. So it is actually not so organized dahil ito po ay isang dream. Ito po ay isang fantasy. At yun po ang karakteristik ng Dadaism. So let's try to look uh, for this painting, The Melancholy of and Mystery of the Street. So kinoconsider sa painting na ito yung about sa value and about sa perspective. No, ng kanyang mga objects. Okay. Next, we have, next up movement, we have the surrealism. Surrealism depicts an illogical, subconscious a dream world beyond the logical, conscious, and physical one. So, if we are familiar kung uh, paano i-describe ang mga bagay-bagay na nakikita natin at alam natin sa mundong ito, ang surrealism is actually imagination um, beyond what is real. Okay? So, maaari bang may ganitong bagay? Maaari bang may ganitong bagay? So, parang sa, sa mga artworks ng surrealism ay nagiging posible yung mga imposible. Okay? So, like this one, wala naman tayong lusaw na lusaw na clock. Tama ba? Persistence of memory. Pero parang sinasabi ng memory na ito na parang nawawala na, nagwa-vanish na yung mga ala-ala na meron tayo. Maaaring ganun ang sinasabi ng mga painting na yan. The painting is actually going beyond what is real. Next, we have the, uh, another ex, uh, sub-movements under expressionism is the social realism. Social realism expresses the artist's role in the social reform. Ano na nga ba yung mga um, estado ng mga artist na ito sa ating lipunan. So, they are using their painting para mas may express pa yung kanilang mga role. Para mas mag express pa ng kanilang mga message ng kanilang mga um, gustong sabihin sa lipunan but in a form of paintings. So, it definitely talks about social, about tao, about relationship about community, about society. Expressionism. Next is the neo-primitivism. When we say neo, neo means new. Primitive deals about native, about tribes, about ethnicity. So if we'll try to combine these words, which is neo and primitive, which is new and ethnicity. So, nagiging, uh, ang ibig sabihin niya is new way of presenting no, the, the elements of um, native, the elements of tribes, the elements of ethnicity. Like, incorporated elements from the native arts of African tribes, which is the wood curving. We have another art movement, which is the abstractionism. Abstract, minsan hindi natin naiintindihan. Pero kung sino pa ang abstract or kung ano pa ang abstract paintings, sila pa yung may mas malalalim na message. First one is cubism. 
Cubism is artworks where a play of planes and angles on a flat surface. Kung papansin nyo, gumagamit sila ng mga lines, mga colors, yan, ng mga planes and angles. So, huwag tayong malilito kung malalaman kasi natin kung ano ang root word ng cubism, which is cube, at ang cube ay isang form. Well, ang form po ay hindi ginagamit sa cubism. It's actually more on planes and angles on a flat surface. While in futurism, which is another sub-movement under abstractionism, arts were created for a fast-paced, machine-propelled age. Okay? So, future. Root word ng futurism ay future. No? So, makapapansin nyo na ang kanilang mga subjects dyan ay more on machines. No? More on high-tech. More on transportation. More on technology. That is futurism. Next, we have mechanical style. Ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. Huwag malilito between cubism and mechanical style. Ang mechanical style ay gumagamit po ng mga planes, cones, spheres, and cylinders. Okay? Which is considered as a form. So, sa madaling salita, ang cubism ay gumagamit ng mga shapes samantalang ang mechanical style ay gumagamit ng mga forms. Two-dimensional for cubism, three-dimensional for mechanical style. So, kung makikita po natin, ang example ng uh, artwork is nandito sa ating bandang left, which is the city, the mechanical style by Fernand Ledger. So, kung mapapansin natin na ito pala ay mga buildings na gumamit ng mga forms, okay? Spheres, cylinder, cones gumagamit sila ng ganyan, no? Okay. For our next sub-movement, we have the non-objectivism. So, very, very basic, no? Nandun na mismo sa kanyang pangalan na non-objectivism. Non-object ang mga ginagamit. Kasi kung mapapansin natin, itong New York City by Pablo Picasso, gumamit lang siya ng colors and lines. At naglaan din po siya ng mga spaces. Okay. So, maaaring ang interpretation natin dito ay mga kanto no? sa New York. Maaaring mga daanan. So, maaaring ganun ang interpretation ni Pablo Picasso dito sa New York City. So, kung papansin nyo, pwede lang din pala kayong gumawa ng mga linya-linya, mga checkered, at pwede nyo sabihin na ito ay kanto sa kanyang mga lugar. Tapos, pangalanan nyo na kung saang lugar kayo nakatira. So definitely, kayo ay isang artist na. Next is Abstract Expressionism. So we're done with Impressionism, Expressionism, Abstractionism. This Abstract Expressionism is actually a combination of Abstract and Abstractionism and Expressionism na kung saan mas nagiging expressive sila pero mas nagiging abstract ang kanilang mga output. Okay? For our first sub-movement, action painting. The techniques could be splattering, squirting, and dribbling paint with no pre-planned design. So, wala nga idea. So, anong gagawin mo lang? mag splatter ka lang. Iwawasik-wasik mo lang yung paintbrush mo sa iyong canvas. Squirting. Maaaring ilalagay mo ito sa isang plastic at maggagawa ka lang ng opening at tatalsik-talsik lang sa inyong canvas. And dribbling. Maaari namang gumamit kayo ng sponge ng paint na kung saan i-dribble-dribble nyo lang doon sa inyong canvas. Okay? So yun, walang pre-planned design para sa action painting. Okay? Next, we have the color field painting uses different color saturation to create desired effects. So, ang ibig sabihin natin ng saturation, ito yung intensity kung gano'ng katapang yung mga kulay na ina-apply ninyo. No? So, kung papansin ninyo, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, mas magulo ang abstract expressionism. Pero may mas malalim silang mga meaning dito sa kanilang mga artworks. Next, Let's move to the contemporary art forms. Let's begin with op art or the optical art. 
characteristic of optical art is a form of action painting with the action taking place in the viewer's eyes. So kung papansin nyo sa output na parang kung nagkakaroon siya ng action ng movement, nagkakaroon siya ng effect na ganun dahil sa paggamit ng mga lines, paggamit ng mga space, at paggamit ng mga contrasting colors. Okay? Nagkakaroon ng visual effect ng ganun and that is optical art. Next characteristic, as the eye move over the different segments of the image, Perfectly stable components appeared to shift back and forth. Kasi mapapansin natin dito sa output natin na may iba't iba siyang segments, di ba? Nagkakaroon ng uh, different distance sa bawat line, different um, distance ng colors only, para magkaroon siya ng illusion na effect. Okay? Yung tamang paggamit ng lines, tamang paggamit ng space and ng color ay nagkakaroon ng visual effect sa atin. Na parang gumagalaw pero actually hindi naman po. That is optical or op art. Here are some of the outputs of my students. Okay? So ang papansin nyo na parang puro lines lang naman at contrasting colors ang ginamit pero nagkakaroon ng pati pala uh, different um, spaces no? no may magkakadikit merong lumalayo para magkaroon ng depth okay or lalim uh, next is the pop art no first characteristic of pop art is the range of work from painting to poster collage and uh, 3d assemblage and installations kagaya ng output ni Andy Warhol which is si Madeline Monroe na isang artist. Okay? Popular art ang tawag po dyan. Next is inspirations and subjects. Ang kanilang mga inspirations or subjects ay about sa advertis advertisements, about celebrities, billboards, and comic strip. Dahil ito nga yung popular. So guys, kung papansin ninyo, sa ating uh, contemporary art forms, meron na pong influence dito ang technology. No? So, kung papansin nyo, ba't sila nakahiwalay dun sa apat na nauna dahil mm, gumagamit na tayo ng iba't ibang mga media na dito sa mga art forms na ito. So, next is the performance art. The actions of the performers may constitute work. It can happen anytime at any place for any length of time. So, papansin nyo, meron yung time dyan. Time is a very important keyword to describe the performance art. At kahit sa ang lugar, pwedeng mag-perform or pwedeng gawin itong performance art. It may include activities such as theater, dance, music, juggling, and gymnastics. These are some of the examples, performance art in the street and performance art in theater. In performance art, the performer himself or herself is the artist. So, wala po tayong painter dyan. Kung sino yung mismo nagpa-perform, sila po ang artist sa performance art. Next, installation art uses sculptural materials and other media to modify the viewer's experience in a particular space. So, gumagamit ito hindi lamang ng sculptural materials. Majority kasi gumagamit ng sculptural materials. Pero gumagamit din sila ng iba't ibang media or iba't ibang mga kagamitan na pwede ninyong i-install. Okay? Install means ikabit or idugtong. Okay? So, Uh, in a particular space kasi maaaring ito ay sa wall, maaaring ito ay sa room, maaaring ito ay sa museum, maaaring ito naman ay outdoor. Okay? So, usually, life size or even larger. Maaari kang gumawa ng isang caricature ng isang usa. Maaaring real life na usa or gusto mo yung isang higanting usa na kung saan pwede mong palitan ang sungay nito at ang gagamitin mo ay ang mga sanga ng puno. So, yun ay isang example ng installation art. Okay? 
The installation can be constructed in everyday public or private spaces, both indoor and outdoor. So here are some of the examples of the installation art indoor natin. We have the Passion de Revolution at Passion at Revolution. Meron din tayong Cordillera Labyrinth. So, yung ginagawa nating collage is actually an example of installation art kasi kinakabit-kabit natin yung mga other media or yung mga other materials sa isang platform. Yan, balloons. Pero actually, in-install lang po siya. It's definitely considered as installation art. Yan, ito naman yung output ng mga estudyante ko nung isang taon. So, yung I Love the NHS, which is an installation bottle. So, let's wrap up everything. So, we discussed four art movements and four art forms, which are the following. Impressionism, to give impression. Expressionism, to express more. Abstractionism, weird. Abstract expressionism, weird and unorganized but more expressive of art optical illusion it gives actions and uh, movements pop art popular art performance art performing in different spaces or places installation art installed materials so ganun lang kadaling intindihin ang pagkakaiba-iba ng mga art movements na ito at art forms so, if you have questions, please let me know para ma-clarify ko kung ano ang gusto ninyong i-clarify. So, that's all for today. I am Teacher J. D. Mendoza Becerra and I am your Arts 10 Teacher in Module 2. Saying goodbye!